The first part of our Bible reading today is from John's Gospel, chapter 1, and we're going to read verses 1 to 5. The Word became flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Now we're going to continue our Bible reading from John's Gospel, chapter 1, and from verse 10. The Word was in the world, and although the world was made through Him, the world did not recognize Him. He came to that which was His own property, but His own people did not receive Him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. And we pray that God will give us understanding of this reading from his word. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. Or as Eugene Peterson phrases it in the message, the Word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Well, this week, let me tell you about a marvelous thing that a large group from Bloomfield, led by Stephen McDonald, did in partnership with Walkway, with Beersbridge, Beersbridge Road, Elam, and with Bloomfield Community Centre. This week, they uh, donated and put together 400 boxes of joy, hope, and light for members of the local community. And here are some of the photographs of them putting them together in our new church hall before and after a presentation of a certificate of civic duty presented by Belfast's Lord Mayor, Frank McCubrey. We're really proud of everybody who gave so generously of their time and the resources to enable these joy, hope, and light boxes to happen as an extension of God's great love for humankind in which Jesus took on our humanity and moved into the neighborhood. Now, I know you're far too polite, but I know exactly what you're thinking. You want to know what was in those boxes. Well, let's have a look. Two of my happiest childhood memories are of boxes, uh, surprise boxes, wanting to know what's in the box. Uh, I remember being at a summer fair and, and, and having one of those sawdust barrels, do you remember those? And, and you had to close your eyes and put your hand away down into the sawdust and, and pick up something there, and it was a great surprise. That was wonderful, what is in the box? And then there was a television program. Now, this really will age me, but it was called Take Your Pick. Do any of you remember that? With a, with a New Zealander called Michael Miles, where the contestant had to decide if they were going to take the money 
or open the box? Well, we're going to open the box uh, and find out what is in this joy and hope and light box. At least we'll find out a few things. Well, what about joy? (laughs) What could give you greater joy than mini chocolate fingers or um, munchies or after eight? There we go. Lots and lots of joy in here, but it's not all chocolate. Oh, well, actually, it is Belgian chocolate Yule log. That will give me lots more joy. And Pringles. Who doesn't like Pringles at this time of the year? Lots and lots of things in there to give great joy. Oh, here's one here, a 50-pound note. Um, Bank of chocolate. More chocolate. Even more joy. But there's other things as well. Shortbread. And it says, follow the star on it. And do you know there are some amazing ladies in this church who made all this homemade um, shortbread for 400 boxes for the local community? Well, do you know, they are amazing women. And what joy that will bring to so many people within our neighborhood Let's see if there's something else. Oh, yes, I think this will give particular joy. I opened this up, and here is a Christmas card. And you open it up, and it says, Happy Christmas from Elm Grove Primary School. So the boys and girls have taken time to make cards for people within the community in order to help bring great joy. And I think that's amazing all those wonderful things in this box that give joy. Well, what about hope? And I pop my hand in here, and I see a little red book, and it's covered with lots of Christmas decorations, and I open it up, and I discover it's a gospel according to St. Luke. Well, that's different, isn't it? I wonder what hope could be in here. Well, let me open up in the middle, and I come across right in the middle of this book, some words from Luke's gospel, because that's what it is. I tell you, says Jesus to his disciples, do not worry about your life, what you're going to eat, or about your body, what you're going to wear. Life is more than food. Your body is more than clothes. Consider the birds. They do not sow or reap. They have no storehouse or barn yet God feeds them. Are you not more valuable than the birds? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very little thing, why do you worry about the rest? Isn't that very hopeful? Let's read on. Consider how the wild flowers grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, King Solomon, in all his splendor, was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and gone tomorrow, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? So, don't set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Don't worry about that. Pagan people worry about those things, but your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek first his kingdom, and these things will be yours as well. Well, that is a wonderful thing to discover about hope. And I look in here, and there's a little leaflet, and it's called Christmas Hope for a COVID World. And this booklet or leaflet tells us about Jesus because he is the source of hope. He is the one who has come from the Father. He is full of grace. He is full of truth. And while this world is a world of darkness, the light has shone in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We have seen His glory, the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. In this disgraceful world, God has granted us grace. Jesus, who has come full of grace and truth, that is hope for our present, and that is hope for our future. 
So, we've seen some joy, and joy is all around us. We've had some hope, which comes from God himself. And the third thing in the front of the box is light. Now, if I look in here, there are different things that speak of light. There's, there's a candle that you can light if you uh, know how to do that. And, and then there's a star with, with a real candle in it, and that would be really beautiful on your Christmas table. And, and then there's this, this bag that is full of pieces of wood and paper and instructions how to make a lantern. Now, we're not going to do that this morning because it's far too complicated, but it's great fun. So, in true Blue Peter style, here's one that the man's family made earlier. And there's the lantern. How about that? And that's good fun to make. And this is a reminder that in him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. However dark life may seem to be at the moment, however uncertain our future, when we place our hand in the hand of God, that will be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Ah, but you say, joy, hope, and light. I imagine those are only for worthy people. Those are only for those who are already good, and that doesn't include the likes of me. Joy, hope, and light. They're for those who are already faithful. Not so. Not at all. In fact, the very central truth of Christmas is that joy and hope and light are not for those who already have everything together, but is for those who know that they haven't. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. He is born for me, for you in all your weariness, bitterness, brokenness, and guilt. O come you, unfaithful. He's the Lamb who was given, slain for our pardon. His promise is peace for those who believe. This Jesus, who at a particular moment, at a specific time in history, came down from heaven in order to become like us, to rescue us from all that is not good. The Lord Jesus who died on a cross in order to dispel the darkness of our lives, to grant us joy in the present and hope for the future, light for our darkness, this Jesus was the Lamb who was given, slain for our pardon. His promise is peace for those who believe. And so we pray. And first of all, we pray for barren and waiting ones, those weary of praying. See what God has done. We bless you, Heavenly Father, that in our fragility and vulnerability, even when we cannot pray for ourselves, Jesus is interceding us for us now. Help us come to you and to believe. We pray for all who are bitter and broken with fears unspoken. For those who are anxious or afraid at what this Christmas time may look like. Those who have become twisted and deformed inside because of repressed anger, hurts, or pains. And we pray that they, 
No, Lord, all of us may come. Come to you and taste of Christ's perfect love, which casts out fear. And finally, gracious God, we pray for those who are guilty and hiding, running away from God, running away from self. Enable us, Heavenly Father, who like Adam and Eve want to hide behind the darkness of our own fig leaves, to venture out into the light and purity of your love, recognizing that Jesus, the light of the world, has taken our sin on his shoulders, washed our guilt away, and made us clean and pure within. Help us, Heavenly Father, to receive this unmerited gift of joy and hope and light. And what we pray for ourselves, we pray also for our world in all its need. In the name and for the sake of Christ our Lord.